So, hey everyone. I really want to do my October to be read. So this is everything that I would like to read in October. Whether I will get through it all is a completely oof, different matter. Sorry, I have to readjust. Um, just because I am a slow reader and sometimes I do struggle. But anyway, we'll get right into it. So I currently want to finish off this one and I have 100 pages left and then I want to do a review on this one. This is basically about a group of people who go to a festival that doesn't exist, social media and that lot, and kind of like Plum wants to feel a part of something and be somebody, which I kind of understand that. And so she goes to the island and accepts an invitation that was for her sister who is an influencer um, for Peach, but plums go. And people are currently dying and they're having to figure out who is trying to kill them. So yeah, there will be a more in-depth review coming for that one. But that kind of is a mystery spooky one, so I thought I may as well just get that finished um, and get that on there. The next one that I want to attempt to read, whether I'll actually get round to it, is Big Bad Me by this author. And this is basically a book about uh, werewolves and vampire slayers. And it kind of, it was the cover and it was the back that drew me to this book more than anything. So um evie wilder just found out she's a werewolf now her mum's gone missing she has to go into hiding and there's not a single helpful vampire slayer to be found with the help of kevin the dorky hot manager of the guest house where she and her sister lie low evie starts to harness her wolfish side but there's something weird about kevin meanwhile animal attacks are increasing local teens are going missing and evie is about to find herself at the center of a supernatural showdown so I read the back and it just, werewolves are not really my cup of tea, but vampires, um, yes, but again, it just, it kind of, the cover drew me to it and the back, because it says Goodman's Guest House. Um, so yeah, so I want to try and get this one done in October. This one I found on Instagram again, and as soon as I saw it and read the information they provided, I was like, I want this, I need to read it. Um, so this is This Delicious Death, and this <laughs> this just sounded really good to me, and I really love the cover, and I just think that this would be perfect for trying to get through Halloween, you know, as winter rolls in and it gets dark, and you kind of read with your hot chocolate, and you have, like, your dark kind of books, so... Uh, I'll read the blurb. This summer is going to get gory. Two years ago, a small percentage of the population underwent a trans transformation known as the hollering. These affected were only able to survive by consuming human flesh. So zombie vampire, uh, not vampire, zombie uh, kind of thing. Those affected were only able, sorry, without quickly becoming feral, turning on their friends and family. Luckily, scientists were able to create a synthetic version of human meat that would satisfy their hunger. As a result, humanity slowly began to return to normal. Cut to Zoe, Celeste, Valerie and Jasmine, four hollow girls had living in Zoe, living in Southern California as the last hooray before graduation, they attend a musical musical festival in the heart of the desert. They have a cooler filled with sizzler vodka and sin flesh and are ready to party. But the first night of the festival, Val goes feral and ends up killing and eating a boy in one of the bands as the other festival guests start disappearing around them. The girls soon discover someone is targeting people like them. If they can't figure out how to stop it, and soon no one in the festival is getting out alive. So yeah, so I kind of read the description they provided, loved the cover, and I was like, I really want this. So I found it in an independent bookshop, um, and I'm really glad I did, because I kept checking Waterstones, and again, it was um, tell me what really happened in Waterstones that I couldn't find for love and no money, but I went in there and I had them, so I was like, I'm going to buy them. Like, I'm not even going to hesitate. The next book I have had for years and years and I've never got around to reading it and it is it was such a popular one back in the day but I feel that I want to get this one read this year and I want to try and review it if it's any good and that is Anna Dressed in Blood 
<coughs> sorry so i believe this is like a ghost related type of uh story paranormal but um it says get ready to sleep with the lights on because this book has two sharp ones so when i read that um and it says not for younger readers on the back so i was like i kept putting it off because i was like i don't really want to have nightmares but i'm gonna read it and i'm gonna go for it and review it but chase lowood is no ordinary guy he haunts dead people people like anna anna dressed in blood a beautiful murderous ghost entangled in curses and rage Cass knows he must destroy her, but as her tragic past is really revealed, he starts to understand why Anna has killed everyone who's ever dared to enter her spooky home. Everyone that is except Cass. So, I believe there's another book to this that's not available in paperback. You can only buy it as an ebook. So, if I like this one and I really want to know more, I will get the second one on um, Kindle. Yeah, but this one. Um, I think you can still buy this one, but it's just the second one you can't get hold of. But again, it was spooky and it ca I'm sure it came out in Halloween like many, many years ago. How old is this book? Came out in 2012. Oh, this edition published in 2016, first published in... 2012 so i think it was a halloween book for like 2012 back then if i remember correctly okay another one that i really wanted to read that i couldn't find for love no money so my friend um got it for me for my birthday because we couldn't get it on amazon uh, not amazon we couldn't get it from waterstones couldn't get it from ind any independent bookshop so got it from amazon and that is four found four found dead this is such a spooky um and I think this is perfect for the season. And again, I want to review this one for my channel. Um, but I also fell <laughs> in love with the cover as well. So I was like, I'm going to get that. Well, I asked my friend, she said, what do you want for your birthday? And I said, I sent her a list of books and she got Big Bad Me and this one for me for my birthday. So I'm really thankful for that. Um, but this author has done other books as well um so they're just on the back if anyone's interested and this is natalie d richards who's done this book so um this one's based at a movie theater so it's kind of movie theater vibe so again but it's kind of got a dark twist to it i believe so i was like perfect um it's getting darker now the nights are rolling in you know this this will be a really good good read and i want to review it as well so at the movie theater where joe works the last show has ended but the nightmare is just beginning Tonight, Riverview Theatres is closing forever, the last remaining business in a defunct shopping mall. The moviegoers have left and Joe and her six co-workers have the final shift, a shift that quickly takes a dark turn. First, a stranger arrives with a chilling accusation. Then the power goes out and their manager disappears, along with the keys to the lobby doors and the theatre safe. Where the crew's phones are locked, each shift their tensions turns to terror when Joe discovers the dead body of one of her co-workers. Yeah, so it's definitely deep and Halloween-y. Now their only chance to escape the murder in their midst is, is through the dark, shuttered mall with, the, with its boarded up exits and disabled, disabled fire alarms. The complex is filled with hiding places for both pursuer and pursued. In order to survive this night, Joe and her friends must trust one another, navigate the sprawling ruins of the Mal and out with the killer before he kills again. I cannot wait to read this one. I think this one's going to be scary and it sounds like an awesome read. So again, and this one I want to review as well and couldn't find it for Love No Money when it came out. Read the blurb, loved the cover and I was like, I want this. And then went in Waterstones and I found a copy of it and... I borrowed money off my husband so that was how I got around that one um was by borrowing money off him so I could get it but I'm thankful to him because if he didn't let me borrow it I wouldn't be able to get it but this is you won't believe me um so yeah fell in love with the cover is so dark this author has done some other books as well and first survival then escape willow is alone confined to a bed with restraint she can't remember how she got there or how long she's been there an old lady appears in her room to feed her twice a day 
Granny doesn't talk, but Willow can hear thumping from somewhere beyond her door. It's not Granny's shuffling steps. It's too loud to be Granny's cat. Is it someone, something? Then Granny Cat dies in Willow's room, and Granny follows a few, day la few days later. Will Willow will do anything to survive, but freeing herself from her bed is only the beginning because there is someone else in the house. Who is this mysterious trick? teen who calls himself Elijah and how is he the reason she's hostage or the key to her escape so this sounds messed up and psychological and again I cannot wait to read it so and again I want to review it as well but so that's my book haul for October 2023 and I'm so looking forward to reading all these um please like comment and subscribe because it helps the channel grow and it helps me get my dream towards um being a booktuber hopefully so thank you